God is good, and all the time, God is good. Our first lesson is from Acts chapter 2, beginning verse 22. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God, with deeds of powers, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David said, concern, says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is my right hand, so that I, may, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to, to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, and will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would, be one, that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. From 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead in, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, yet you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Our message is entitled, Starting Over. I have always liked making things. Uh, I've always liked taking boards right from the sawmill and turning them into pieces of furniture or something useful around the house. Something like, you know, a picture frame that I can hang on the wall. You know, maybe if my brother and my sisters hadn't hogged all the Play-Doh when I was young, I'd have gotten that sort of thing out of my system, but I didn't. So to this day around my home, you'll find furniture that I've made. It's not perfect, but I made it, and it's there. Uh, or maybe something the Amish made. Uh, my new hobby is playing around with metal. And the beauty of this new passion that I've got is it's like when I mess something up, I can always start over. And the piece that I mess up, it, it just gets thrown into the scrap bin. And whatever is in the scrap bin stands a good chance of being made into something totally different from what I originally intended. Now, I'm glad to say in a very similar way, our God takes our mistakes and he fashions them into something even better. In the economy of God's love, nothing gets, you know, wasted or thrown out forever. In a non-judgmental way, God actually allows us to mess up. God allows us to spend our time chasing after pipe dreams, even after fool's gold. But from the scrap heap of our former lives, God can create something special and something with infinite meaning and purpose that will live on even into eternity. Now, it'd be kind of hard to mess up any more than did the, the chosen people of God. From the very beginning with Adam and Eve, uh, God chose to make something special. 
Something unique out of the human race. Of no other created being is it said that they were created in the very image of God. Yet, for our own good, and their own good, for their eternal future, God kicked the first man and the first woman out of the Garden of Eden. And by the very sweat of their brow, they had to start over. They would began eking out a, uh, you know, a life by scratching in the dirt. And out of Abraham's seed, a chosen people was born. And the chosen people were intended by God to be the light unto all the nations. And so up until this very day, you know, that hasn't always turned out all that well. Many times, the chosen people of God had all their work, all their best efforts thrown out. No sooner had Moses led the people out of Egypt, you know, they, they went right up to the promised land. But they got banished to the wilderness for 40 years because of the gross unbelief of the people. The word of the ten, ten spies, prevailed over the word of the two spies. Two of them said, hey, we can take it. God is with us. The other ten said, ah, you know, we, we're like grasshoppers compared to these guys. And, uh, you know, we will never prevail. And so for 40 years, God banished them to the wilderness, whipping them into shape, become the very people of God. So 40 years later, only Joshua and Caleb, of the original spies, they were the only ones that were allowed to enter into the promised land with the rest of the people. Now, finally, God sent his son to set things right. And after three years of public ministry, the Jews had Jesus crucified by the Romans right there on the cross. Now, I suspect that if you or I were running things and the human race treated our child like that, it would have been curtains for the human race. But God was not done. Easter happened. We're an Easter people. The stone rolled away from the tomb. And everything was made new. And then on the day of Pentecost, Peter addresses the crowds who witnessed the believers pouring out into the streets. And they're all aflame with God's love and supernaturally enabled to speak, you know, the, the languages of places where they'd never been. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of powers, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up and having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in his power. As David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me for he is at my right hand and so I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. Peter let the crowds know that David had seen this day and the significance of God's mighty do-over in his son. Now David foresaw that because the Messiah would defeat death. And because the Messiah would defeat death, so would all those, including David, who were made, who were willing to be made new by, you know, the Father. And they would experience eternity in the presence of God. And so, jubilantly, Peter could declare to the crowds. He says, fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried. And his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up. And of that, all of us are witnesses. On the night in which the Lord was taken from him, Peter had not been all that confident. That same night, he even denied knowing him three times. And then the clock crowed twice. 
Um, God took all that rubbish of his former life and he threw it in the scrap bin. Instead of being the everlasting shame that defined him, his former failures became the new work in Christ Jesus that enabled him to start over. And this time with conviction and with Holy Spirit power. This knowledge and this conviction flowing through his veins made a new man out of Peter. And it can do the same for us. For God is not interested in who we are or what we have been. God wants to know who and what we can become in Christ Jesus. That's not to say that the enemy who beguiled the first man, the first woman in the Garden of Eden, isn't still up to his old tricks. Oh, he is. And if anything, his hatred of God, his passion for destroying the people of God, it's grown deeper over the years. Particularly since he can probably sense that his time for running loose to harass and poison this world with all of his deceit and his lies, it's running to a close. Now addressing a world very much like now when all believers have targets painted on their chests, the Romans and the Jews alike had pretty much declared war on the body of Christ. In that day, how the believers were scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, and they were sprinkled like salt throughout five of Asia Minor's, you know, Roman provinces. Basically, Satan had declared war on the church, and he was using his influence in the political parties that of that day were, you know, a force to be reckoned with. He was using that to try to wipe out all traces of Christianity. But blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. Who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Now, in these words immortalized in Holy Scripture, Peter is giving us a living hope in very uncertain times. Just like in Peter's day, members of the, of the church can be making some pretty unwise decisions. But that's okay, because God's got this. He's always had this. And all of that yucky stuff of, us, of ours, eventually it's going to end up on the scrap pile. Uh, the best of our best is only going to be that which stands in the presence of the risen Lord. That is the only thing that is going to accompany us into heaven. The rest of the stuff is simply going to be left behind. It's going to be on the scrap pile. The enemy is fixated on all of our failures. All of that yucky stuff that God wants to cast off into the scrap bins of our lives. God doesn't hold on to that stuff. Nor even the memory that stuff. God wants us born anew into a true living hope that is our birthright in Christ Jesus. Peter would have us know that after Easter, we're supposed to be taking a victory lap. And although you have not seen him, yet you love him. And even though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. We are an Easter people. It's in our DNA. This is our spiritual DNA. No matter what the culture, no matter what those swayed by the influence of the enemy might have to say about it, we can get derailed by what's going on around us. I mean, our entertainment industry. Aliens, werewolves, vampires. Uh, we can get buffeted. We can get swayed by the gender confusion that is, um, and, and it's all exasperated by Planned Parenthood. 
We can cast all that stuff into the scrap yards of our lives if we're willing. And we can choose Jesus and we can live a new life. Begins right here, right now, today. We don't need to be hampered by the deceit, the, the lies of the enemy. We can claim our birthright, which is the joy of our salvation. Now, during the course of our lives, there's going to be wars. There's going to be rumors of wars. There is going to be confusion and much misunderstanding. But absolutely nothing can rob us of the promise of new life which is found in Christ Jesus. As far as the east is from the west, so far has Christ cast everything that might hamper us away from us, that we might stand pure in the presence of our God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, you have created us to be a new being in Christ Jesus. And Father God, we pray, Lord, that our lives might reflect the changes that are occurring daily within us. Because every day is a fresh start. Every day is a new beginning. And you are recreating us in the very image of thy Son. We thank and we praise you. In Jesus' holy name, amen.